So welcome everyone to day two of Gain Youth Summit. We're going to be starting in the next um, two minutes. Um, please welcome, use the chat section. Tell us where you're joining us from. My name is Chimwe Okoli and I'm the Executive Director of Grand Africa Initiative. We are really, really delighted to have you join us today, the second day of uh, the Gain Youth Summit. We're excited to see you all joining us this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're joining from. Please tell us in the chat section, where are you coming from? Where are you joining from? Use the chat section, okay? So we're just going to jump right into today's session. And I am super delighted to be your host today. I want to say a special thank you to all who found time to join us yesterday, which was the day one of the Gain Youth Summit. So we're jumping into the entrepreneurship and innovation stage today with the topic driving youth, on, driving youth entrepreneurship, business environment, financing, and know-how. So for this panel, we'll have uh, His Excellency, Mr. Georges Rubelopinto Chikoti, the Secretary General, Organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific Group of State, OACPS, Belgium. Ably represented by Mr. Espion Joaquin Oliveira Gomez, the Assistant Secretary General for Structural Economic Transformation and Trade, SET, OACPS. And Ms. Tefa Ashwe, the National Co Coordinator of Nigeria, ITC, that's International Trade Center's She Trade Common Wealth Project. This session will be moderated by Patrick Ego, investigative journalist, all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. Mr. Patrick is an award-winning freelance investigative journalist based in South Africa, where he is currently an Open Society Foundation Fellow on investigative reporting at the University of Witwatersrand. Patrick has more than five years of journalism experience covering conflicts, migration, global health, education, climate change, corruption, and other developmental issues in Nigeria and the Sub-Saharan Africa, which has been published by publications such as Foreign Policy, NPR, African Argument, This is Africa, Bright Magazine, OZ Ripples Nigeria, International Center for Investigative Reporting, and elsewhere. In September 2019, he attended the 11th Global Investigative Journalism Conference in Hamburg, Germany, where he presented a paper on the challenges of doing investigative journalism in Nigeria. Two months later, he attended the Falling World Science Conference in Berlin and used the opportunity to cover the 30th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall, which had German, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, President Frank Walter, Stemmen and leaders of Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, and Czech Republic in attendance. He had been recognized and awarded some international journalism prizes, including the 2020 De Rose Hinghaus Memorial Awards in the United States for reporting on migration and human trafficking in 2019, Post Writer Story Prize in Berlin, Germany for a collective reporting on female genital mutilation in Nigeria, Kenya, and Senegal and the host writer pitch prize in Warsaw, Poland in 2018, in, in 2017 and 2016 respectively. He was announced winner of the Amina Gorib Fakim Award for Science and Technology in Ethiopia. And in 2016, Hala Prize for Development Journalism in Kenya for reporting on victims of Boko Haram insurgency in Northeast Nigeria. Last year, Host writer, a nonprofit cross border organization based in Berlin, Germany, which connects more than 5,000 journalists from more than 150 countries around the world, appointed him as a host writer ambassador for Nigeria. Patrick organizes workshops and trainings for Nigerian journalists and mentors over 100 journalists or journalism students across the Nigerian universities. So he grad he's a graduate of Masters and bachelor's degree in media studies from the Department of Mass Communication, University of Nigeria in 2019 and 14 respectively, and presently studying for PhD in the same institution. 
Patrick, we have your attention, please. Yeah, thank you very much for um, the introduction. Really happy to be here, you know. Um, I've been following the conversation, you know, um, since it started, even before it started. And, you know, it's been amazing, the conversation, the engagements and, you know, um, everything around the summit. So thank you very much. Um, today um, will be, um, the topic for today's session is um, driving youth entrepreneurship, business environments, financing and know-how. The high points uh, we'll be looking at today, uh, we'll be looking at, you know, the business environment in Africa, the anti-business policies by governments, you know, across Africa that affect entrepreneurs, and um, the lack of skills for entrepreneurship, you know, the way forward and um, solutions by, by experts. And to um, discuss this uh, very important topic, we have two um, distinguished um, experts and um, panelists who are going to be, you know, making presentations to discuss um, this very important topic. And the first on the list is um, His Excellency, um, Judges Robelo Pinto Chiquito, Chikoti, I beg your pardon. Um, he's the Secretary General of the Organization of African, Caribbean, and Pacific States. That's the OACPS. Um, the OACPS is an international organization based in Belgium, and it's made up of um, 79 countries. Um, but Mr. Robelo will be represented today by uh, Mr. Esipion Oliveira Gomez. Um, he's the Assistant Secretary General, Department of Structural Economic Transformation and Trade at the OACPS. And Mr. Gomez is um, the first panelist who will be discussing the topic. And Mr. Gomez, I must say, has. Um, um, he's not yet here, but I must say he has a towering profile and um, it's going to take us the whole day to, you know, <laughs> read his profile, but I'm going to keep it short. Um, I, I, I'd like to say that Mr. Gomez is from Dominican Republic and um, has over 30 years experience in drafting, managing, supervising, and evaluating multi-donor programs and projects for the creation and threatening of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises and business support organization in the six OACPS regions at national, regional, and all ACP levels. Um, before Mr. Gomez joins us, I'm going to introduce um, Our second panelist, who is going to be discussing the topic, and we have uh, Ms. Sefa Ashwe. Um, she's the National Coordinator, Nigeria, International Trade Center, she trades Commonwealth Project. Um, Ms. Sefa is a lawyer and a transnational expert with job experience, you know, extending to the um, World Trade Organization, ECOWAS Commission, among others. Um, I'd like to call on uh, Ms. Sefa to um, please give us her presentation while we wait for Mr. Gomez to join us. Go ahead, I think you can share now. Fantastic. So um, let's just start. I've also placed my presentation within the context of COVID. Uh, taking into consideration that this is where we are. I, and a lot of entrepreneurs at the moment are also, okay, this is going to be interesting, are also in this, in this particular space. Like I said, we'll be discussing what entrepreneurs can do and what, um, you know, the support institutions that work with them can do to um, help their recovery post COVID. Um, unemployment is a real issue in, 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 in Africa amongst the young people and amongst even uh, the general population. And I strongly believe that one way uh, that we can address this 
uh, alongside and one way to really create the jobs that we need for the future and for growth and sustainable growth in um, on the continent is entrepreneurship and um, supporting actively supporting micro, small and medium sized enterprises, especially those that are youth led. So um, this is what we'll be discussing today. Um, and this is an overview. So the problem now is that I'm going to have to. Yeah. So the outline really will start off with you sharing some of the challenges that you uh, that are surrounding youth entrepreneurship. This I hope will be a very interactive back and forth conversation. Uh, and then I will go into categorizing all those different challenges into four um, broad groups. And then I'll be talking about crisis management and strategic resilience and recovery planning uh, for the youth and entrepreneur. Uh, I will also be going into depth um, the She Trades Commonwealth product, the ITC developed uh, crisis management toolkit uh, for small and medium sized enterprises. Uh, I'll be going over this, including the resilience and recovery action plan canvas that was built specifically for the purpose of uh, micro, small and medium sized businesses that are trying to plan um, for recovery uh, during and post COVID. And I'll also share some of the resources that we have made available within that toolkit as well. Um, shortly after this, I'll go into some of the recommendations on the way forward, as I discussed. Um, this is where we get, it gets interesting. Uh, I'm glad that it's young people here. Um, so the first question really, and how I'd like to start this conversation is by um, us discussing what, how would you would describe in one word um, your COVID business challenge. If you're able to, if you have your phone with you, just scan the barcode there and um, answer this question. Just give me one word that will describe your challenge, um, your COVID business challenge right now. If you're not able to scan the code, just go to um, sildo.com, use the uh, meeting code hashtag cheat rates, and, um, and then you can answer the poll directly. So just give me one word, one word that would describe your COVID business challenge, one word. You don't need to write a phrase or, you know, many things. Are you able to connect? You can scan the barcode. Or uh, as an alternative, I'm going to share the link directly into the chat box so that you can go in and um, You can go in and, so I'm still waiting for your responses. That's the link. If you just click on it, it will take you directly to the poll. And just let me know what your one challenge post-COVID is. Your one COVID business challenge has been. We're still waiting for responses. Nobody, okay. Thank you. I see people are bringing in their responses. One challenge post COVID. One put and business. Um, what is your one one word that you use to describe your COVID business challenge? One word to describe your COVID business challenge. So I'm going to I'm going to share the results of the poll so that you can see what everybody else is thinking. Your your number answers are coming in. That's good. Thank you very much. Um, let's make this interactive. We're young people. Technology is not something that we're afraid of. We're born into the generation that had to transition. So, okay, it's been costly. Low turnover. That's interesting. Finance has been an issue. Only five people have responded. Low turn, costly, low turnover. It's been challenging. Finance, high cost of material. Finance, no home human interaction. We have more responses. Okay, so that being said, 
um, this is not, I'm not surprised because these are the challenges that, um, you know, micro, small and medium sized businesses in Africa and around the world have had to um, manage. Um, I see you're still coming in. I'll leave the poll running and uh, you just keep feeling if you, if you want to just let me know some of the specific challenges, your one business challenge that you've had to address um, over COVID. Uh, no human interaction, I find that very interesting. Um, so that being said, um, all of these things can really be um, categorized into four groups, I would say. One is job loss and increased unemployment. So the economic impact, um, there has been a impact to our person and a uh, personal impact in relation to our mental health, uh, health and safety. Um, some of it is also related to family responsibilities. There's been a shift in that area. Um, to our businesses specifically, they've been operational challenges. So somebody said that, um, you know, high cost of material, it's uh, access to your suppliers um, may have been a challenge. Uh, somebody said finances, that's a business challenge. Somebody said um, low turnover, finances as well, as a business challenge. Social, um, community and relationship shifts. Somebody said no human interaction, that has been a huge challenge. Um, vulnerable, vulnerable groups have also been put in, a, in, a, in an interesting uh, place. That's also a huge challenge. Um, so these are some of the challenges that businesses and um, young people really, I think, have had to address and um, are trying to navigate um, now during this COVID uh, crisis. And I guess the question is, as an entrepreneur, uh, how am I going to handle this? How am I going to navigate this? As we discuss later on in the session, I'll also like to hear what you've already been doing. Uh, as a business, as a young person, as an entrepreneur, to address this. But one of the key ways in which you can um, be deliberate about your response is through crisis management and innovatively finding ways to respond to uh, the crisis and the impact that it's had on your business. Um, and that is what we'll be talking about today. How can you um, be innovative in your recovery planning? How can you include innovation, agility, and, and proper coordination in order to allow your business to recover. I was looking at uh, an advert today on Instagram and it was, it's by the Dubai government and they were talking about how, why work any, why work at home when you can work anywhere in the world, uh, when you can work in Dubai. We know that Dubai is a huge tourist spot. So you can imagine the kind of impact that, um, you know, shutting down of airlines and uh, travel restrictions may have had on their economy and, and the businesses within the tourism sector um, in, and travel sector in Dubai. And so coming up with that new way to be able to attract people to still travel and still visit um, their country is an innovative response uh, to the crisis. Um, there's another story about um, um, resorts and hotels in the Caribbean. And one of the ways in which they have been able to um, address this challenge as well is that they've opened up their resorts and their hotels to travelers that are looking to, you know, self-isolate. So if you need to travel and you're required to self-isolate for two weeks, so as opposed to self-isolating in and you're looking for accommodation within the country, um, they've opened up the resorts. So you have a comfortable place, you have um, five-star treatment while you're self-isolating and you're able to actually take care of yourself mentally and physically as well. So these are all innovative ways to respond to a crisis. Sometimes you need to shift, sometimes you need to readjust, sometimes you need to tear down and start again. Um, but um, today we'll really be dis discussing how young entrepreneurs can, what are the things that you can take into consideration when you're um, you know, planning for resilience and recovery. Um, I like that definition there. It says the ability to absor absorb and adapt in the changing environment to enable a business to continue to deliver on its exact, um, objectives and to survive and prosper. So I think the key point, I think, for most of you entrepreneurs and small businesses today um, is how, and I think it's a question that you keep asking yourself over the next year, um, to be honest, is how can I continue to deliver on my core competence as a business? How do I survive this and not just survive? How do I find a way to pivot and grow during this experience, during this, this really difficult time? Um, just so that you know, 
uh, a business when you're planning. And I'm sure right now you're thinking, oh, we're doing well. Uh, we're a resilience business. For those people that have that um, psyche, uh, just know that a business cannot be, there's no fixed point to resilience. It's either you're less resilient as a, as a business or you're more resilient. But there's no place that you say, oh, this is a place of complete resilience and I don't need to do anything more because change is something that um, is constantly going to happen um, with the crisis now. We see that in a lot of countries, they're going through a second wave. Uh, so it's important that you, which just lets us know that where we thought um, will be towards the end of the crisis now and the impact is going to be having on our economy, we're anticipating another probably six months of recovery post, uh, you know, post the second dip. So um, there is no fixed point to resilience. You need to keep on planning. You need to remain on your feet. You need to be innovative. You need to be working with a team that um, gives you ideas on how to build, how to grow, how to change, how to pivot, um, and, and how to navigate uncertainty. So we'll be talking about a few of these things. Uh, I won't go into this because I know that I don't have enough time, uh, but business resilience is, and, and I think I've already said a lot of this um, in the last uh, couple of minutes, uh, resilience is about effective risk management. So how able are you as an entrepreneur or as a business leader to be able to anticipate the risks that are that you know that you know the that your business uh, will have to face? How what how diverse are your leadership skills, your knowledge, your experience? And if it's not just you, how diverse is your team that you're working with in terms of um, knowledge and, and experience and and um, and exposure. And if you don't have a large team, so you're a micro small business and you're, you're a sole entrepreneur, um, your peer group, uh, your network, how diverse is that network in terms of leadership, knowledge and experience? How can you deep into, um, in, into you know, your, um, that bandwidth of, 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 of knowledge that you can, um, you, know, you can build on? So a plan that enhances resilience and recovery, how and what is needed? Um, you need commitment. Um, like I said, um, uncertainty is something that we're going to have to be managing even after this crisis. The way in which uh, I'm going to also be assuming that one thing that we've seen during this COVID um, lockdown situation and, and things that have evolved even through the summit is that uh, technology is now something that is not on the side in terms of how we operate, but something really at the core uh, of how businesses will continue to uh, survive over the next, you know, going forward. So, and one thing again that we're sure about in terms of technology is that it's ever changing. Um, it's, 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 and, and that change creates a lot of uncertainty. It creates a lot of shifts in industries. So it, uh, resilience is something that you need to be committed to. You need to be committed to, and it's difficult, I understand. Uh, there's a quote by a business that was shared yesterday, a business that we work with. And she was like, as an entrepreneur in Nigeria, um, it has been really difficult over the last couple of months trying to navigate and, and especially over the last two weeks, actually, because I think businesses were just starting to um, come back after COVID. And then there was the, you know, the, the, the political unrest that happened again in the country two weeks ago, which basically meant that some people left, lost property. There was a lot of, dis um, you know, uh, yeah, so it's something, but she was like, you just need to keep showing up. And that ability to keep showing up means commitment. You need to be constantly committed to growth, to, um, to surviving, and uh, to, to keep innovating. Um, you need to have a coordinated approach. So the steps that you're taking cannot be haphazard, haphazard, excuse me, cannot be haphazard, means that you cannot have one thing that is pulling you in one direction and another strategy that doesn't make any sense to the next one. So you need to have a coordinated approach. And in order to have a coordinated approach, you need to have a clear mandate to ensure commitment. So you have to have a clear objective for what it is that you're going to, what you're trying to achieve in terms of resilience. What does resilience mean to you as a business? It's not only about survival, but what does, what does survival look like for your business in actual real terms using specific figures? What does that mean? In the next three months, what does it mean for my business in terms of survival? What am I trying to meet um, to, to achieve? A clear objective, a clear strategy objective that, that you know, maps out your, your uh, direction of travel, so to say. Uh, what are the resources that I need? And how am I allocating the resources that I currently um, have available to me? If you have limited resources, this is not the time to be 
prioritizing to not prioritize appropriately. You want to make sure that um, you're allocating uh, adequate resources to your key objective for resilience. And, uh, and you know, I'm sorry, please just let me know if I'm out of time. Um, you have to have a proper governance structure. D this again depends on the number of people that you're working with within your business. If you have a small group, I really advise that you dip into your network, dip into, you're able to, your, your, your pair group, um, collaborate with businesses that are in similar positions as you, find a way in which you can you know, structure your activities so that you're able to leverage off each other's strengths and core competencies, and you don't have to try and do everything on your own. Um, ensure that you have investments that are mechanisms to ensure that the investments that you're getting in um, are, 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 are contextualized appropriately, and you have a proper system within your business for implementation. So not that you have this key objective or this strategy objective that you write down one day and you're thinking, I think anything that we're going to get out of today really is each person here, we have 117. Um, if you're able to write down your strategic objective for resilience over the next three months and not just to write it down and keep it in mind, but you have it out there and you have key steps, key action steps on what you are going to do to make that happen active steps on what you are going to do to make that happen. And, and do you have a system in order to ensure that, um, you know, you're able to implement this objective? So coordination, we've talked about um, commitment. We're now talking about coordination, very important. Um, resilience and recovery, agility. Um, you need to be agile in how you're delivering your plan. Um, like we said, uncertainty is something that we're going to be, you're going to have to tackle with. Um, so you need to learn, you need to, you know, imbibe the attitude of um, agility. So meaning that you need to take on a posture that allows your business and yourself as an entrepreneur to embrace change and to be able to respond, to learn. So if uh, to learn from, from your actions and to, so here we just have different things. So you develop a scenario, different versions of your future you establish a broad direction of travel. Where am I going? What is my strategic objective? You start to take moves, you learn from those moves and then you re, you start again. So things might change, but you learn from that change or last month or last week that worked. How can I take this forward? What didn't work? Be quick to let those things go. If it didn't work, don't hold on to it and still hoping that, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe figure it out. What made this not work? If it's not working for my business, it's time for me to let it go. Let me move forward to something that uh, will keep me forward. So um, integrate that spirit of agility okay. as you uh, plan and go forward. Um, so, Ms. Tessa, can you hear me? Sorry? Yeah, you, you are going um, past your time. Um, but can you please um, summarize um, in, let's okay. say, two minutes? Yeah. Uh, two minutes. So I'll just refer you to, in terms of recovery and resilience planning, I refer you to our crisis management toolkit. Um, that's the link to it there. You'll be able to, I, I could share this link after, uh, where you'll be able to access a very important resource. So it's the Resilience and Recovery Action Plan Canvas. So I have discussed all the different steps that you need to take as a, as a business right now. Um, in order to strengthen your ability to continue to survive and to be able to thrive during this space. And in order to enable you to do this, we've built a resilience and recovery action plan canvas for your business. Um, this is what the canvas looks like. Um, it allows you to identify your strategic objective, your responsible team, uh, the impact of your business, uh, scenario analysis, um, your strategic, then you identify your strategic um, action, the constraint to your ability to achieve that, um, strategic action and the resources that that you are that your business requires moving forward um, we've also developed an eight-step plan uh, first of all you define your strategic objectives you identify the responsible team understand the real impact to your business in terms of the impact on your business on uh, your people your operations your finances your supply chain your ability to continue to deliver on your core competence plan out different for different scenarios we've outlined four different scenarios for you to to plan for but it's something a scenario will depend on your business. Decide on your next step. What am I going to do next based on these different scenarios, based on the impact that COVID is currently having on my business and list out relevant constraints to your ability to deliver on those action steps. What are the resources that you need? And then your plan. So to check your plan, the wrap test basically means, does 
do the steps that I, um, are the steps that I've identified uh, as my next steps, do they match? Do they get me to my strategic objective? Remember we talked about coordination. So what I'm doing next, does it match? Does it help me get to uh, where I'm going? Does it help me get to my, where I'm going? So I'll just skip all of this. And uh, since yeah. I don't have enough time. Your time um, is, is even up, yeah. Yeah, but I just have a few last things that I'd like to say, um, especially as it relates to what we can- kind of steady. It's just one slide that is showing. Is it, is it me or you? Is it one slide that is showing? Yes. Uh, that's strange. Hmm. Is that still the case? Yes. Okay, so get more time from this because this is, I'll stop sharing and, and start again. Yeah, is this yeah. still the problem? Yeah, it's, it's okay. okay now, you're no longer sharing. Okay, so I'll go back to one last point. Um, so for the environment, remember we talked about uh, things because I did promise that we're going to be talking about what the entrepreneur can do and what, um, and what the business environment can do to support them. I think right now it's important that we understand the young entrepreneurs that we're working with. We need to understand their locality, where are they based, the industries in which they are operating in and the sectors that they're operating in because we need to be targeted, we need to be focused on the kind of support that we're providing these entrepreneurs um, to understand who these enterprises are. Where are they in the terms of uh, the stage? Are, are they on the idea stage? Are they early enterprises? Are they startup? What are their capabilities? What is, are the knowledge and skills that they already have? Um, so I think it's important that we understand the enterprises that we're building for. Uh, we also need to apply market-based interventions to ensure their sustainable recovery and growth. So this goes without saying investment. We need to invest in these in, in young enterprises. We need to build business opportunities in industries relevant to youth-led enterprises. We need to create market access opportunities uh, for, for youth enterprises. We need to support a business network and, and partnerships. Um, enterprise building and support services, extremely important. Uh, these are some tools that are available for the enterprise right now within the ITC um, in terms of um, building your capabilities, ability to be innovative and resilient. We have the SME Academy. We have a series of trainings that are available and free courses that are available for you to, to learn and to build your capacity as a small business. If you're a woman-owned business right now in the room, we have the She Trace Initiative, which is a robust program uh, for women-owned businesses. You can access this uh, program, this initiative through an app or directly through the website. If you just go to SheTrace.com, you'll be able to get access to information. Uh, we have SheTrace Invest, which connects women-owned businesses to investment opportunities. We have a host of different partners that are working, we're working with, that are providing mentorship, um, mentorship programs, um, coaching programs, direct trainings, and specific projects in different countries, ranging from Africa to to yeah around the world that so i think i'll stop there um yeah, yeah. um thank you very much thank you very much uh, uh miss Pfeffer, for that wonderful presentation and um i believe i believe you really you know discussed the heart of the topic which um you know we want to discuss today and i really like the way you started with the poll you know to really give the audience a sense of um, what we are talking about today. Um, thank you very much. And before we go into questions, because uh, we have a couple of questions, uh, I'd like to invite um, Mr. Gomez. Uh, you were having network issues at first, but we are happy to have you here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, delays happen when you give old people technological tools. So I wanted really to excuse myself. And I really want to thank uh, Mrs. Okoli for the opportunity to address this, uh, this very important meeting and Patrick as well, that uh, Patrick and uh, Mrs. Okoli were trying to help an old man join a new system. So thank you very much. Uh, I am gonna be talking on behalf of the organization of African, Caribbean and Pacific States and of my boss, his Excellency, Mr. George Rebelo Pinto Chicote from Angola, who is the Secretary General of this organization. Uh, the OCPS 
unite 79 countries of Africa, the Caribbean, and the Pacific under one common goal, which is promoting the sustainable development of our countries and their gradual integration into the global economy. And our objective is really to eradicate poverty in our countries. In this strategy, definitely, women and youth empowerment play a critical role and are at the center of all the actions that we undertake. How can I pass slides? Okay. How can we tackle the COVID-19 pandemic that we have today? The first thing is that we must recognize that the pandemic we're facing cannot be addressed by a continent, country, region, sector, and much less a company alone. We have to find collective solutions to our problems. We really have to foster public private sector cooperation and dialogue, which is at the basis of everything. We must say that people like myself which I'm a public servant or a civil servant. My role is to help people like you, people that create employment, that create wealth, that create prosperity. So the public private sector cooperation and the role of international organizations like ICT, uh, ITC, sorry, which is with us together today and of which I would like to say hi to Pamela Cook Hamilton, my former boss in the Caribbean. Uh, we have, in order to, to, to promote also prosperity, we must start thinking locally and buying our own products and services. One of the main things I find difficult in our own countries is that we don't believe in ourselves. And when we go to a supermarket and we see, let's see, a Nigerian product or an European product, we believe that the European product will always be better than, us, than ours, which is not always the case. So we have really to rediscover our roots and buy local. This is a very big, a movement now today in Europe that they want to buy locally, they want to trace products, but we should also be part of that in our own communities. And definitely, again, we have to support vulnerable group, groups such as youth and women. In the photo that you'll see in the, on the bottom is our summit of heads of state and government. Uh, president Kenyatta of uh, Kenya is the president of the ACP group, and then you see 79 heads of states together working towards a common goal, which is sustainable development. What are the challenges that you may, be, may be facing today as entrepreneurs in order to really put your business where it should be under the COVID pandemic? First, to promote a, health work, a healthy working environment for young people. That also includes, and I have seen it in, in my own country, uh, permitting people to allow safely uh, transit to the work. That means uh, some companies have put in place buses so you don't have to pay public transportation and take the risk. Uh, also, uh, having hand sanitizers, having soap, etc., in the workforce, because uh, and even disinfecting from time to time, giving masks, gloves, whatever you believe is the necessary. You have also to try to retain and motivate the workforce in a very difficult time. All of us have problems in our own houses. And when you have problems in your own houses, you are not that productive. So you also have to engage a dialogue. You have to reach your consumers. Uh, the normal ways of doing business have been broken. And I'm very happy to see that the youth is starting to use a lot of uh, internet and, and online basis in order to sell the products and reach consumers. The, the, the global consumption, at least for a lot of the products we, we service, has declined. Something that we will touch later uh, we have really difficulty in accessing financial resources, but I have a special slide on that. The value chains have been disrupted because uh, we have problems accessing the raw materials that we use and our raw materials going into other value chains. We have to generate trust in consumers, reassure them that our products and services are safe. And one of the most difficult, because I have been working a lot in COVID response systems, I'll try to touch a little bit of those. When we work with formal enterprises, it is easier because if you need to give them a tax break, if you need to give them, for example, in my own country, the Dominican Republic government was paying salaries, uh, up to 80% of salaries of SMEs, up to $300. But if you're in the, in the informal economy, you don't have a bank account that they can give you the, the, the money for, uh, you're not registered, you're not protected. So one of the main challenges we found ourselves in policy making was addressing those most vulnerable people the informal sector, which in many of our countries is the backbone of the economy and create a lot of wealth and a lot of prosperity. We at the OECPS are, are calling for a changing paradigm. We believe that unprecedented times 
call for an innovative joint approach. Our development policies must address the needs of underprivileged youngsters, promoting social, economic, and cultural inclusion as to enable them, basically you guys, to flourish to your full potential and be able to contribute to your society. We believe that by ensuring the personal development and well-being of our youth, we will be forging a prosperous, fair, and peaceful society. Uh, for more, it has to be seen also by our development partners that most of us do prefer to live in our countries. Now I'm living in Belgium. If you look outside, it's very cold. I come from the Caribbean. I cannot tell you how I miss the sea. But we do a sacrifice sometimes to move from our countries to look for better future. If we had that future in our countries, we'll be more contributing to this. And I, for that, I would also like to give a big applause to the, to the diaspora that helps our countries and also comes back and invests in those countries. I think that, that innovations is, is, the, is one of the main things that we should do. And innovations in tech, in ICT, is very important. We, as countries, we do have to modernize our ICT infrastructure and also expand it outside, because in many of our countries, infrastructure is very strong at the main cities, but in the countryside it's not. So we don't want either a movement of people from the countryside to the cities to find jobs. So we need to strengthen our networks, but also promote the use of ICT tools by our youth-led SMEs. Young entrepreneurs must have access to the latest technology. Sometimes it would mean leapfrog technology, which is something that we should look at. Really, we should be at the latest front in technology and also need training in management, their own businesses, because most of the business people for small companies and youth, they, I would call them a, um, one orchestra man. The guy is in charge of sales, is in charge of human resources, is in charge of purchasing raw materials, is in charge of finance. So you, managers need to understand every process to be able to follow. They need training in management, in marketing. They, they, we have good products, but sometimes we don't know how to sell them. Accounting is a big thing because really for the accounting part, you do really need to, to be able to, to follow your accounts, especially when you're getting loans. And then technical assistance in your specific the field of expertise. We need to invest in digital transformation. This will strengthen the social cohesion and economic resilience. I do believe that investing in the youth will help the country as a whole. And we definitely have to encourage research and development, the collaboration between universities and SMEs, and the registration of intellectual property rights. Many times we have great ideas and either they're not registered or protected, sometimes they're stolen. And also, we also need definitely to look back over traditional ways of doing things. Our elder did things in a particular way because they knew also their own climate and their own period. And so it's a mixture between old and new. So, uh, this is trying to, uh, okay. We need to promote a conducive business environment. And for this, we're working with, our, with the European Union, which is our main development partner. And with other people that you'll see on the bottom, like Germany, British, uh, the British, the French, in supplying targeted policy instrument to create the, to, to promote the creation of youth employment. One of these examples is the investment climate reform facility. You have the website there, you, you can see and you can access for some help. It promotes a conducive business climate through the legislative reforms, very important, that includes tax reform as well. Uh, uh, also registration, uh, uh, paperwork, how you reduce it to allow people to access it. Institutional support to business support organizations is very interesting because we cannot reach every single company by uh, enhancing the competitiveness of uh, small business associations, chambers of commerce, export associations will be reaching more people and also use entrepreneurial associations. And we also promote a lot of capacity building and exchange of best practices, all based on really thinking about sustainability and promoting public sector dialogue. In the photo you see upstairs, you'll see a, a model is sharing uh, one design of an OECPS designer in a fashion show organized by the European Union and the OECPS. Next slide. And this. Okay. We also need, as we explained, to provide financial resources for you led SMEs. The ACP and the EU have joined forces with the African Development Bank, the Caribbean Development Bank, all the European Development Finance Institutions to set up a series of instruments. There are a lot, 
and you can find them in a web page that will supply later is Business ACP. And these financial instruments try to boost youth internship by promoting financial inclusion and delivering financial services. Those financial services concern credit, savings, payments, guarantees, insurance. For the guarantee is very important because sometimes when you go ask for a, when you go to ask for a loan for an idea first, and we were talking about intellectual property rights, our banks are not adapted to consider an idea or a, even an, an, uh, a computer program as an asset. So if they tell you, okay, your business idea is very good, but give me the, the land lead of your mama's house or your dad's farm, etc. So this is not ways that we can promote. So guarantee systems and insurance are very important to access to allow you to access these loans. We need technical assistance to SMEs. We're helping specific sectors, such as education, health, ICT, cultural industries, which is a very important point for the OECPS, agricultural value chains, small scale, small scale mining, that means uh, precious, semi-precious stones and others. Big mining doesn't need our help, yeah. green energy. And we also have installed blending instruments to help hedge the credit risks of our financial institutions. The financial institutions of OECPS countries are very risk adverse. So the idea is by hedging the risk, by guaranteeing funds, they will be taking the risk on younger people and it's working. So what we want to propose is also for you young people, reinvent yourselves. Globalization has changed the way we live and do business. Technological innovations have shrunk the dimension of space and time. To survive, you will have to find innovative solutions. You will need to establish your competitors using that special thing, that je ne sais quoi, that defines us or defines you. Forging strategic alliances and translating three things, where, what, and how, into authentic stories, stories articulated to targeted consumers. Where is what we say is the market segments where you will have a competitive advantage. Go for the niche, go for the luxury, go for the fair trade, for the diaspora, for the healthy. But in order to do that, you must understand and uh, the needs and expectations of your consumers, the trends in your markets. What would be the products and, off and services that you offer? You cannot or you should not be competing in price nor volumes. That is too risky and it will only sell, in my opinion, misery. You have to work and compete in quality and specificity. You have to adapt your products and services again to the need of those markets. You have to work in labeling. You, uh, marketing is a big important in this. You have to understand again, packaging is a big thing. You need to adapt the taste. Some people prefer more sugar, less sugar. Uh, in some countries, gluten-free is very important. And for example, for those that work in cassava, cassava is naturally gluten-free. So you can sell cassava specifically to that market easily. Chocolate is uh, very, very important for our cultures. And we can also sell, sell and promote a very dark, high, uh, rich chocolate rather than to sell these candy bars and they sell. But however, to do that, you, you have to follow the standards of your market. So you have to get accredited and so forth. So we propose to sell a story or provide a dream. You have to see your product, not only as a product, but as something that, as if you will tell you, marketing fulfills a need. How can you do that? You have to transform your own heritage. I am a, I am a lot about heritage. Your own yourself into a unique selling proposition. You have to provide value to your uh, a value proposition and your goods must be accessible. They have to be appealing uh, to the eye, to the taste. They have to be authentic. You are not supposed to sell uh, European shirts to Europeans. For example, today I'm, work, I'm wearing a Ghanaian shirt. So, and I see that Mrs. Terfa is also wearing a, an African print. So it's very important. It has to be authentic. Oh, and earrings as well. I, I, I took my earrings off today. Uh, they have to be innovative. They have to be consistent because when you buy something, when you get it today, your consumer expects you tomorrow to buy exactly the same product. So you need to ensure the quality that would allow you to every time that your consumer goes for your product, he has the same one that he was expecting to. It has to be convenient. It has to be of quality. Definitely, we should compete in quality, in quality, and quality. It has to be secure. People shouldn't get sick, and that also goes into the quality. It has to be unique. Why, why am I buying from, buying from Patrick and from Terfa and not from uh, Sebastian? And definitely, you need to be accredited. You need really to have that accreditation that will prove all of this. Sometimes it's expensive, but this is why we also propose group accreditation. I would like to finish with some final words 
because for me today, your future is now, your time is now for you, the youth. For people like me with gray beards, my time passed away. And I want to use a poem from a famous Latin uh, uh, person who says, youth, divine treasure, you are leaving me now to never return. When I want to cry, I can't cry. And sometimes I cry without meaning to. Basically, youth passes very fast, embrace it, use your culture, do it now. I do not believe in tomorrow. Those that work with me know that I have three times which are now immediately and uh, right away. So go for it. The OECPS is by your side. We really want to help you in this process with our partners. ITC being one of those partners. I really want to thank Mrs. Okoli for this great meeting today. And I wanted to say thank you, merci, merci, obrigado, thank you, gracias, Binaka, Jerry Jeff, and okay. Hassan. Thank you, very, thank you very much, Mr. Gomez, for that wonderful presentation. And um, um, I, 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 I was really happy to hear, you know, of the several partnerships when you were making your presentation that you have um, with the European Union and um, the British, you know, government, you know, to make the um, business environment conducive for young people in Africa and in the 79 states that you cover. Um, now is the time for um, questions and comments, general comments from, from the participants. And we, I can see we have um, a couple of questions from from the chat box. Okay, the first question um, is for Ms. Ashwe. Uh, one of the participants is asking, how can a young college, um, how can a young college going student be able to become an entrepreneur, especially during the um, COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, before, thank you. Very please, before you respond, uh, um, I would be happy if we can keep the you know response very short because we don't have time. Yeah, I know, I know. That's my fault. I apologize. Um, thank you very much. Uh, the quick response is I'll just borrow from, you know, uh, you know, just do it now. Come up with a plan. Uh, I'll give you a simple tool that you can use to to draft out your plan. I don't know if you're familiar with the business model canvas. It's not as complicated as a robust business plan, but it allows you to be able to map out everything that you need in order to build your, um, to basically conceptualize the idea that you have for a business. So what is your idea? And then using that business model canvas, you can be able to build in the different spots, create the, the different blocks that you need and what it is that, and you're able to identify what it is you know, what it is that you don't know, and, and the resources that you need to you know, sort out. So I'll say now while you're in college, um, develop that idea, um, learn the different skills, what is it that you need to be able to implement the idea. And especially now during COVID, you want to use as much uh, the opportunity. If you've not already started the business, use this time to learn and equip yourself. Use this time to you know, expand your knowledge base. Use this time to participate. You know, we're talking about quality products and, and management skills and things like that. What are the skills that you have? Where are the gaps? Use this time to fill that gap and to develop your idea. This is what I'll say. So take up the business model canvas. It's a very simple resource. If you Google it, you will get it. You will be able to download it. It's not complicated. It's something that you can use. Sorry about this noise. It's something that you can use uh, independently, or uh, if you have a buddy, if you have a you know a buddy that is also interested in business, it's something that you can um, work together and and complete. But I think it's the first point where you're able to kind of just map out the idea. No matter how rough it is, do it now, not tomorrow, not next tomorrow. Do yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you very much for that question. Um, then another question from Gabriel um, is um, for Mr. Mr. Gomez. He, Gabriel is asking um, how, how to maximize the phrase, your time is now as an African youth. I think that, that the idea is to pursue your dreams uh, and do not let other people put you down. Uh, the beauty for me of, of, of our culture, because I consider myself being Caribbean, I, I, I consider myself being part of that blending uh, that happened in my country in which 
that Africa has a lot to do. We respect our elders, but elders must also embrace youth. It's a normal cycle, so there has to be a discussion. And how can you use now is pursue your dreams. Time flies. I see myself as a young person, but everybody else doesn't. So time goes very fast. And if you have a dream, if you have an idea, pursue it now. We have some instruments in your countries that can help you uh, to pursue that dream. ITC has other instruments and our partners. The idea is to be able to work with you, but at the end of the day, but you be the one pushing for your own business. We're only there to help you. You are the entrepreneurs. So I hope yeah. I responded. Yeah, yeah, you, you did. Thank you very much for that. And um, um, I, now I'd like to um, have your comments, both of you, uh, Ms. Tefa and uh, Mr. Gomez, on GAIN, um, which is organizing this youth summit, is obviously doing an incredible job, you know, in developing the youth and, you know, advocating for all around development in Africa. So, Ms. Tefa, I'd like to um, have your comments on. Uh, your thoughts about um, the activities of GAIN. It's funny, no matter how long we've been doing this, we always forget to unmute. Um, <laughs> so I think it's very important. Uh, I really appreciate. It's important because you're able to bring together so many young people from around the world. I think that um, one of the weak points uh, for youth entrepreneurship is really the network. Uh, you're young, you don't know, really know where to go to access resources, you don't know where to go to get information, you don't know where to go to get the support that you need. So being able to engage with uh, young people and young entrepreneurs like yourself from other countries allows you to be able to, it gives, it gives your members and, and the, 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 the youth that you engage with an opportunity to learn from each other. Um, that cross-border network to see each other as a community and not just as individual pods that are struggling on their own. And I think that network, that pair building, that, that support that you provide is extremely important. Um, platforms like this that give um, valuable information. I know sometimes it feels as if what we're saying we've been, has been said before, but you'd be surprised how for most people, it's the first time that they're getting the opportunity to learn certain key points or certain facts or, okay, this is what the ACP is doing. And, uh, this is how I can key into that. Uh, this is what the ITC is doing. This is how I can key to that. So access to that info important information and how they can build themselves, how they can collaborate and how they can grow. Uh, I think it's extremely important. And, and I'll just like to commend, uh, commend the hard work that you're doing to, to support youth entrepreneurship and uh, you know, youth development overall. Yeah, thank you very much. Mr. Gomez. Yes, uh, one thing just to, in, our, in Latin America, my name is Oliveira Gomez. Gomez is my mom. Oliver is my dad, so you, we use two last names, but it is just for the record. I think that what I love about this, and I really like to applaud the initiative of Madame O'Kelly and then yourself, Patrick, is that it gives people like me that are working in policy, people like uh, Terfa that is also working in policy and putting in place systems to help you, to hear you directly what are your needs, because it is of the utmost importance of this dialogue. Um, I, I was looking at the, at the program, you have ministers, you have bankers, uh, you have uh, deciders at regional level, hearing you and you listening to them. For me, and, and even if COVID exacerbated it, I think that the development can only be achieved by dialogue and collaboration. Policymakers like myself need to hear from you what are your needs, and you need to hear from us what are we trying to install. Now, uh, recently, we launch the creation of an OACPS business forum exactly to allow the private sector to be able to talk to us in trade negotiations. What, the, what are the trade advantages that you need? What are the barriers to trade that you have? For example, something that I didn't touch in barriers to trade is that when we negotiated economic partnership agreements, we normally opened the cultural sector or the service sector. However, for a Nigerian, for a Dominican, for a Haitian, for a Senegalese to travel to Europe, they need to get so many paperwork that you can even ask yourself if that is a real a market opening for us. A lot of the bands playing in summer festivals, African summer festivals here, maybe the singers from Africa and all the rest are basically European from descent, from African descent. So we do need to hear what problems you are facing to do business. 
I saw a question here that asked me, how can, uh, is business only about business? I don't believe so. For me, anything in life is about having fun doing it. Enjoy your businesses. Do it with passion. Do it with care. That will make your product appealing. When you, when people sell their products, they sell their own person. This is why in the pictures I chose, I didn't only use pictures. By the way, all those pictures were taken by me in different missions of work and pleasure. I, I showed pe people playing football. I showed kids. I do believe in, in, in the Greek saying, healthy mind in a healthy body. Also please take of your, of your bodies and your souls and your products will reflect your own well-being inside and will promote well-being to other consumers. To consumers, sorry. Yeah. Mr. Oliveira, it seems you didn't get quite get my question. Okay. Yeah, I, I wanted to um, know your thoughts about the activities of Grand Africa Initiative. No, that, I was explaining that for me, that was, I, I thought like that, that for me, it is a unique platform to allow old people like myself that are policymakers to talk to you, which are doing the difference. And for me, I was delighted when, I, when my boss received the invitation and then I replaced him because even if uh, he would be delivering this message, I would be following because for me, I, I thought the platform allows that exchange and without that exchange, without that collaboration, we will be unable to do our jobs because me, maybe we, uh, Teresa and I will be designing programs to help you go to the moon. But he will tell me, no, I don't want to go to the moon. I just want to go to France. So we have to adapt the programs that we do to help your businesses. So this platform is tremendous, important. Uh, the, the amount of people and important and interesting people here are good, but it's also for me, a great opportunity to hear from the youth. I, I, by the way, I shared the presentation already on the, on the, on the chat for those that needed it or wanted it. Uh, all right. All right. Patrick. Yeah, thank you very much. Don't call me Mr. Oliveira. That makes me more old than I. It makes me feel like I look. Yeah, Mr. Sipion. Yeah, thank you very much for your time and the wonderful presentation. And thank you very much to uh, Ms. Pepper for your presentation too. I believe um, the participants have gained a lot, you know, insights and knowledge from your um, wealth of experience. So thank you very much for your time. Um, Chimwe. Yes, please. Thank you very much, uh, our amazing panelists and uh, moderator Patrick. Thank you. It, it was this this panel was really rich, insightful. I wish we had more time, but of course, um, we 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 had to end it here. Thank you for for the for the rich conversation, uh, Ms. Stefa Ashworth. Thank you for joining, um, Mr. Gomez. Thank you so much for stepping in for His Excellency and please convey our appreciation to His Excellency. Our programs seek to achieve sustainable development by igniting the positive energy of the greater segment of Africa's population, the young men and women. Grand Africa Initiative, GAIN, promoting youth empowerment for development. Join us for a greater impact together.